welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are gonna tell you about some wonderful family-friendly initiatives for kids. You might think the History Museum only teaches history, but they also teach STEM education and a whole lot more. My guests are from the museum, Lucy Cochran and Seamus McGran. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for, for having us. us. So we're really going to talk about one event for starters, mm -hmm. but then build into all the other things you have that, that this audience might also be interested in. Mm -hmm. So Seamus, what is Build the City? Well, Build the City, as somebody who loves uh, history and architecture, it's one of my favorite events. And it's a great way to get families involved in actually building the city. Um, we've, uh, through your help and help of other community partners, have a lot of cardboard boxes <laughs> and I'm recycled material. Yes. Oh, we, our offices are filled to the brim of uh, lots of really cool materials that uh, children and their families can yeah, come. Yeah, the adults get involved in this too. It the really adults is. love it. They really love it. And um, you actually will inspire you with some, um, not just historic photographs, but other photographs uh, of recent buildings. So it's not just about old Hampton. Uh -oh. um, uh, we uh, really want people to get the materials, get inspired, and build like the Hampton Coliseum. Um, last year we had several Ooh, different cool. Hampton Coliseums. You have to really break down those it boxes It really is. So it brings in it incredibly math, creative. math, engineering, um, uh, artistry, all, uh, and plus a lot of fun. But that, the carousel, um, some of those air are kind of The air cool. and space. American theater. Yeah, exactly. All those types of buildings. Chamberlain Hotel. City, city yeah, Hall. I'm thinking yeah. Yeah, City Hall would be kind of easy, but it's cool. Well, it, it is, is cool. You know, it, it, it screams 1970s, but that's kind of getting well, to be a cool thing. Like for a while, it's it retro. looked like this weird yeah, right. eyesore. Yeah. And now it's like, that's kind yeah, of cool. Now, now it's yeah. hip. It's almost brutalist. But And see, that's one of the things. You get a chance to talk to uh, adults and children about different styles of architecture, how that evolved, how just the city has changed over time. Um, but then it's really neat. Uh, you know, the whole day people are creating these buildings, and there's lots of paint and tape and cutting and cardboard and all this going on and then at the end of the day you might have you know a couple of different um, uh, coliseums or, so and you can look and talk about look, how you did yours and, and why that's and it and um, and this year I'm really hoping that some people uh, tackle uh, Fort Monroe I mean I think it would really be the cool. fort itself yeah oh, I nice. think that would really be cool to see um, people do that and then also you see folks get involved with other people to really pull something together and again the interaction between adults and children is uh, you know I always talk about this sort of um, uh, intergenerational discovery, the things that you can do with families. And you see that grandparents, parents, and, and little kids getting involved and in, in doing something together. You know, I had the best time when my kids did Legos. Like, that was so much fun mm -hmm. and something that we did together mm -hmm. a lot of times. So I can see this would be a, a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. I need and to rent a kid. It, yeah. <laughs> and it really is based on that idea of Legos or Minecraft. The idea of you building your world and really looking at your world with a critical eye, an artistic eye. So it takes you know the history of who we are through architecture and really has people engage in it in a way that they don't normally engage. And as Seamus was saying, those conversations are wonderful. But what it does is also take it beyond to really building community. Mm -hmm. And that's certainly something the museum has invested a huge amount of its resources in. Because history is that wonderful vehicle, that catalyst that you can, as you said, teach a lot of different subject matter. But in the end, you're really talking about who we are, you know, kind of evaluating where we came from, what happened to create the city, to make us who we are today. And then it really informs kind of our conversations about where we're going as right. well. So the use of the building, yeah. how people treated it, used it, what it did exactly. for the community, not just the structure. Exactly. Which is, of course, architects think of that too. It's a part of how they design. And actually, by design, we create these programs. We've got this big program. This is what we... Now, hang on just one sure. sec before you go into the... Oh, yeah. Build the city is when? Do we register in advance? Do we just show up? How does it sure, work? You just show up. It's between... 
10 and 2 on Saturday, May 19th. Uh, of course, it's completely free. Uh, we're right there in Carousel Park. Of course, we've got the historic Hampton Carousel. Um, rides are just a dollar, so we really want to encourage people to take a spin on that. And again, enjoy part of our architectural, artistic, and um, social history. Okay, now, you're gonna broaden us sure. out. <laughs> right, so, cause I always like to put it in context, and the idea behind this event, which is a citywide event, where really everyone can come, and we have had thousands of people come in the past. Oh, wow, this is your, how many, third this year? This is the third year. Yeah. Third year, and so then in addition, we have these programs that are tailored just for you know, individual groups, classrooms. We actually have programs that are not only for the classroom teacher, they're for a school or they're for homeschoolers. Whether it's taking things to them, we have this incredible trunk program where we actually have trunks that go out into the schools and they're free. And you basically have materials that you can use, manipulatives where kids can really see what was used, for example, during the colonial period mm -hmm. or the Civil War period. You know, different times in our lives, the Civil Rights Movement is a very popular trunk we have. And they actually have everything they need to teach that history. And that goes out all the time into the schools. That's it, cool. I didn't realize that. It's amazing. Does it do, you do summer camps and stuff too? We like, have not had the opportunity that, kind of to do the summer camps at Parks and Rec are amazing, and actually they can utilize those all the time. And as I said, this is a resource that is available to everyone. Mm -hmm. And then we do workshops. We certainly love to be a part of the great summer camps and even the spring camps, you know, and the winter right, camps that right. Parks and Recs does that really um, brings kids together in, when they're not in school. And we can do workshops there, depending on the subject matter people are looking for. Because as you said earlier, we really cross all the different subject lines. Mm -hmm. And then we certainly do tours constantly. We actually are very fortunate through resources from the community. Uh, volunteers have actually um, helped, us pay, helped us pay for uh, bringing every fifth grader in the city of Hampton and every 12th grader in the city of Hampton to the museum. So they really learn about their town, their yeah, city and our wonderful. history. It really is. And then of course other people come, but. On, a, on the broader scale, it's these services that are either at the museum, like the workshops, like the tours, or the trunk programs, that we want to make sure people realize are a resource for everyone, including families, including, as I said, homeschoolers, and the teacher that may need an extra boost to figure out how to teach a certain subject. Mm -hmm. And for us, then we've also got these great exhibits, because they're kind of the backbone of what the museum does. And for example, we do have an exhibit that's gonna be up all summer about the anniversary of Blackbeard's death and just the pirate theme in general. That's, I think that's gonna be really interesting because it's a little more real. Exactly, <laughs> and fun. For the summer, you want something like that. Mm -hmm. And then we have a wonderful exhibit coming up in the fall that will be up for about a year about an amazing gentleman named Vincent Serio who designed the Hampton One boats oh, that cool. are truly a Hampton heritage uh, piece and they they're known internationally but they were made right here designed right here and they really shaped Hampton because Hampton is a sailing town Absolutely. as we know so I mean those kinds of things everything we do we embed education so we talk about exhibits and certainly everyone of all ev all ages enjoy them but we really do embed educational programming in them to make sure that they're accessible to children and they're not, you don't go into a museum, you know, when we were young, I think we often oh, saw things under so glass. Everything it was, was under passive. glass and you had to read long right. stuff. There was <laughs> nothing you could touch or yeah. do. So we're really trying to change what people see a museum is. And we really want the museum to be, you know, a community center where you come and you do learn and you talk to each other. And in the end, we build community that way. Mm -hmm. But if if we don't do education, you know, we're losing, you know, generations. And so that's why when Seamus talks about the power of just having this great event, like, my, I, I was gonna say Minecraft, like build the city mm -hmm. that is like Minecraft that attracts people, they play it on the in the game, but when they come and do it, it changes because they're actually engaged. Well, so you're gonna follow 
build the city with something called burn the city. Now that, that that's true. Uh, you're going to have to explain that one to me. That sounds a little a uh, little scary. Well, actually, at the very beginning of the war in 1861, this city was burned down. It was actually burned down by the Confederates. Yeah. And there were a lot of reasons why that occurred. And it actually was a dramatic change for not only the city, but really the war in many ways. It actually was a catalyst that you can trace to a number of key factors that were actual national factors. And so we see this as a wonderful way to explore an unknown history. A lot of people don't know about what happened. Mm -hmm. They don't know the importance of the story. Um, the contraband story that is such a powerful American story happened right here, started here, and actually this burning of Hampton was a pivotal part of that story. Yeah. So it really gives us a platform to bring people together to have discussions about what occurred and really how it, it affects us to this day. You see reflections of even the civil rights movement and what happened at that period. You see um, the beginning of kind of a new world order happening after the Civil War ended. You, that actually, you could see that starting in Hampton early. So those kinds of things are the conversations we should have because it really shaped our town. And then of course it shaped America. And we're doing it in a spectacular way. Well, see, that's what I was going to say. Now you said all yeah. the important stuff. Now tell yeah. me the cool stuff. Okay, the cool <laughs> stuff. I know because when you say history, people go, oh, I don't want to go to a history program. But actually, this is going to be outdoors, and I really like to use the word spectacle. I mean, we're respectful of the history, but what we're doing is we're telling it on a large canvas. We will actually be creating, in many ways, almost a film that tells the story It'll be projected on a two-story building. We'll have theater elements. We'll have live actors enhancing what you see on stage. I mean, excuse me, see on the screen. And then we'll have reenactors. And at certain points, you'll be a part of the action. You'll actually be going down the street as they burn. And you'll see the reactions of the townspeople. You'll hear the voices of the contraband people that were so impacted by what happened. So Because and, by by the, this time there were already some contraband folks at right outside the gates of Fort Monroe. That's exactly right. They had just started really coming. That for those three men, those three brave men that mm -hmm. came over and first started this movement, that actually happened and there were a few other things going on, including the voting for succession for the city, I mean, the state of Virginia. All these elements were coming together in May and June. And then, of course, on August 7th is when they decided to burn the town down. But out of the rubble of the town, actually, you did have the first contraband camp grow. Right, right. They were able to accommodate more people and basically were downtown Hampton mm -hmm. at that point. It was almost all contraband. Exactly. And I mean, this is a fascinating, complicated story, and we want to tell it all. But it is really a dramatic story. And we have people that their families were contraband and they still live here. So, And for, for people who aren't familiar, we should explain. Contraband are um, enslaved people who escaped. Um, it, during this period of the war to live mostly free, although not quite legally, to help the um, Union Army to do a lot of things and set up camps in Hampton. Yeah, it was the beginning of the end of slavery. They really it's were... very unfortunate. It took, still took a long time, right. but it was a pivotal moment. And it was a hard time, even once they were at Fort Monroe, you know, conditions oh. weren't the best. I mean, they weren't really completely free. They really, in some ways, were a part of the Union. You know, they were owned by the Union because they were considered contraband. Still, right. But they were not going back to their owners. Mm -hmm. And that was a dramatic change for these people and their first step towards freedom. Well, let's talk more about that event when we get closer, but we do need to give people the date. And, and this is a save the date announcement because this mm -hmm. is something I think you want to plan for yes, to be exactly. around and participate in. It's going to take place August 11th. Okay. We'll actually during the day have an encampment at Mill Point in downtown. And that will give you a chance to really experience the life of the people that lived in the town, the soldiers that were experienced in being part of the war. And then that evening, after sunset, probably right around 8.15, 8.30, 
we will actually begin the event because it has to take place in the evening. Um, and to be able to see anything on a screen, exactly. it's got to be dark, right? And um, we will actually have lights and sounds of the actual experience of the burning, but we will tell this amazing story, like I said, on a huge canvas and really bring it to you dramatically because a lot of people think, oh, history's boring, but these stories are never boring. Mm -hmm. It's just sometimes how we present them. Right. So we know this is the way to get people excited about their history. Okay. And it's going to, like I said, engage you in actually moving through the downtown area. We have multiple locations. We'll be doing projections. And then we'll, of course, have you interacting with wonderful actors that will be portraying contraband, the local townspeople. It's really going to be an amazing experience. Can't wait. Okay, so we're going to build the city at the beginning of the summer yes. and then we're going to burn the city toward the end of the summer and it's all going to be um, local, local, yes. local history and more. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you will join us for one or both of these events and, um, and think about, first of all, it's kind of cool and kind of fun and then the broader implications of what both of these things, the architecture, the sense of place means for Hampton, and that pivotal moment where, you know, today Hampton remains one of the oldest communities in this country, but we don't look it. Well, the burning of Hampton during the Civil War is one of those key reasons because those buildings aren't here anymore. Anyway, enjoy the events and thanks for watching.